All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Una Daly from the Community College Consortium for OER, and we are starting our fifth uh, session of the morning. And I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Jason Pickavance, who is the Director of Faculty De Development and Educational Initiatives at Salt Lake Community College. They have been a member of CCCOER, as many of our speakers have been this morning, uh, since 2015. And um, they have been doing some amazing work in OER adoption. And uh, similar to our last presenter, uh, they have not pursued an OER degree option, but have gone for, um, <laughs> I'm not sure if massive is the right word, but it might be, OER adoption across their um, courses and have made a si significant impact um, on student savings. Uh, Jason, I'd like to turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Una. Um, so again, I'm Jason Pickavans. I'm the Director of Faculty Development and Educational Initiatives at Salt Lake Community College, and I currently lead what we now call our Open SLCC uh, Initiative, which is our OER initiative. And so um, I have a handful of slides. I don't have too many. I want to just talk about some of the work we're doing and then, you know, leave it open for questions um, uh, that people have. Um, and if I can get it to my slide to advance. There we go. Um, first, just, you know, a little bit about Salt Lake Community College to give you some institutional context. So Utah is kind of weird when it comes to community colleges. Most states have like community college systems. We are the only community college in the state of Utah. Um, there is a little college called Snow College down um, in central Utah that's like a little junior college. Um, but in terms of a comprehensive community college, we're it. So we're one college, um, we have about 60,000 students, um, 10 locations, but it's one president, one set of deans, it's, um, you know, so we actually have a relatively light administration, administrative layer, uh, I like to call it for, for the size of the college that we are. Um, and so we're not talking, when I talk about the Salt Lake Community College kind of open SLCC initiative, it's not um, a system office initiative, it is a college, it's a single college initiative. Um, so that gives you some context for where we are. And in terms of, you know, our programs and our students, about two thirds of our students identify themselves as people, as students interested in transfer. So the bulk of what we do is, um, you know, students who are wanting to transfer to the University of Utah or to Utah Valley University or to Weber State. Um, and then about a third are kind of CTE students, career tech uh, students who are looking for an AAS degree or a certificate of some kind that leads to workforce. Um, and the bulk of the OER work that we're doing is in the transfer area, it's in general education. Um, so I'll talk about strategy, although I joke that, you know, I, I sometimes you know, it was probably not until a good year or so into the initiative that I started to think more strategically. Um, it was really, you know, David Wiley and Kim Thanos kind of visiting our campus, boy, I think it's four years ago, and approaching me and, and then Provost Chris Picard with this idea of piloting my open math, you know, in a couple of sections of math. And that's where it sort of started. And then as it began to, um, you know, kind of develop, then I started to think more strategically. So I, in my presentations, assign intentionality and st deep strategic thinking to what in fact, when reality was a much more organic process. Um, but I have here a little screenshot. I, one of the things that I did do, because we were in the middle of a few years ago of redoing our strategic plan, is I did convince cabinet to include um, mention of OER in the strategic plan itself. Um, which I think helped uh, legitimize the initiative. It went from being uh, something that was on the margins, uh, something that just a handful of faculty were doing, to something that was recognized officially in our strategic plan. So under one of the elements of our plan is improved transfer preparation and pathways. And under the, you'll see our strategies uh, right here, offer, open general, offer an open general education certificate. Um, which we have accomplished now. We do 
uh, you can complete all of your uh, general education pretty much at the college uh, through OER. Um, so just that, getting that in, in the plan, uh, I think helped increase the visibility and again, the legitimacy of the initiative. And it made it so that um, when I approached faculty after the plan came out, um, it, they recognized that this was something that upper administration valued and wanted to support. Um, I also made every effort uh, to connect it. We, we kind of have followed, I don't know if you're familiar with the whole kind of free community college idea, um, but we followed, I think it's Tennessee Promise is where the, is one of the earlier ones. Um, and we followed that. So if you're a Pell eligible student at Salt Lake Community College, um, and you agree, I think, to go to take nine credits at least, we pay for the difference between what the Pell pays for and what the education costs. So we're offering to a certain kind of group of our students who are in need, essentially free community college. Um, and I've made every effort to kind of try to connect our OER initiative with SLCC Promise. Um, and I've made the argument um, at the Open Ed Conference, um, but more importantly here at the college that, you know, we have open access as a part of our mission and that working with OER is just a logical extension of what it means to work at a community college. We're all about access and anything that we do to construct some kind of artificial barrier between a student who is in need, um, especially first generation underprepared students that we, you know, often deal with. Uh, you know, if we're, if we're charging, you know, we're assigning 100 or 150 or $200 textbooks, we're really not following through on the mission of being an open access institution. And I think for a long time, you know, among our faculty, that wasn't, um, it wasn't that there was, they just weren't thinking about it, you know, it wasn't visible to them that that was an issue. And I think both with the rise of the rhetoric around free community college and the, the increasing visibility around open, open education nationally. That's just become a much more visible issue to faculty. And no faculty member that I've met has told me, you know, Jason, I enjoy assigning expensive textbooks. So just walk away from me with your open ed, you know, gibberish. Every faculty member I've approached has been in principle supportive of it. And then they just have questions about, you know, is the content good? Is it peer reviewed? Is it well designed? Um, etc. So I've made real efforts to both kind of make open visible in the strategic plan and affiliate it with the broader kind of rhetoric around access uh, at the institution. Um, as Una mentioned, we decided not to apply for the Achieving the Dream grant. I actually think there's, I think open degrees are really cool and at some point I wouldn't mind us developing one but in the shorter term, I thought it was more important for us to continue to develop um, open at the college without um, without forcing the issue, uh, without forcing the issue of a degree. I wanted it to develop more organically. Um, and I talked about horizontal versus vertical development. So uh, we really have done a lot to especially in what's called our core general education in the state of in the Utah system of higher education there's what's called the core component of gen ed and then the distribution areas and the core is english math and american institutions um, and then distribution areas are like humanities life science you know social science physical science etc um, in our core gen ed our core gen ed now is mostly open um, so most Probably 80% of English 1010 and 2010, which those are giant courses. We run, you know, 200 sections a semester of English 1010 and 100 something of 2010. Courses like Math 1030, which is Intro to Quantitative Reasoning, which is the main way uh, non-STEM majors fulfill their quantitative literacy requirement, and Math 1060, which is Algebra, and our entire Dev sequence. Those are totally open, and then our main American institutions courses like History 1700, which is the American History Survey, and Poli-Sci 1100, which is Introduction to U.S. Government. Those are totally open courses as well. Um, so if you, you know, those are 
th that means that probably 70% of our core gen ed is open um, at this point. So, uh, sorry, I'm going to go back here. So, if you're if you're a student at the college, you're gonna you're gonna be taking open content if you're a transfer student. Um, at this point, in terms of the numbers, we started in 2014, so we're about we're like four years in, I think, this semester into the initiative, and we're at 5.8 million. We just actually came up with that. Um, number yesterday, just before the meeting. So this was our deadline. Um, this spring, we're at 1.1 million and at uh, 739 sections. And last fall, we ran 700, 658 sections. So, um, and again, the, that 739, the bulk of that is in our core gen ed. So the way we kind of think about it is we've kind of cast this wide net across our transfer areas to make um, open kind of unavoidable. And um, and then in distribution areas um, like biology 1010, which is a big life science one, is open. Um, we have some physical science like geology uh, is totally open. Um, some social science is open. Some business is open as well, as well as education. So um, if you're a transfer student, you'll probably take two or more OER courses at the college. And I'm actually trying to work with institutional research more to figure out like if we can kind of construct some number that represents not only total savings, but if we could look at students who are transfer students, what the average savings might be. And I would like to do some follow-up research to see, you know, I know there's been some research done at like Tidewater, I think about, you know, what are students doing with that saved money? Are they reinvesting it in their education? Can we see that you know, are they maybe completing more quickly, um, taking on average more credits, et cetera. Um, but that's where we are right now in terms of our total numbers. So we feel pretty good about it. And we feel like um, what we have now is a pretty durable commitment. So we're, we're, we feel pretty safe that in the coming year or so, we're gonna hover around, you know, 600 to 800 sections um, because departments like English and math and history and biology, the associate deans in those areas are really committed to open. They've really bought into it and have um, been real leaders. And then a lot of the faculty in those areas as well have really committed to open. And so I don't get the sense that, you know, next week I'm gonna hear from the English department and they're gonna tell me, you know, Jason, we're gonna go back to using, you know, the St. Martin's Guide to Writing. That's just not gonna happen in the near future. Um, so OER is unavoidable for the SLCC transfer student. Um, and that's something that has been, I'll say, good for us in terms of, uh, especially during the legislative session as we kind of talk about, you know, every, every year in our, in, at least in our legislature, there's always like the rising cost of higher education and it's education success, you know, accessible still to the average student. And it's been nice for us uh, as a college to be able to kind of turn back to the state and say, we're doing something to control the cost of education. And we're doing it in a way that we feel like is scalable and really affects a large number of students. Um, so now I'm gonna turn to working with faculty, like how, how, have, how has my office incentivized work around open? Um, like others, we've done OER grants and stipends. Um, I'm in the middle right now of trying to kind of revise some of that. You know, honestly, the first few years was a little wild west. Uh, and I was just kind of working with whoever would come to me and, and we had a mix of faculty building uh, open content. So uh, we have a geology professor that worked with the lead geologist in the state of Utah to, to build an open textbook around geology. If you go to opengeology.org, uh, you can see that textbook. It still needs some work, um, but but it's being used right now in all of our sections of Geology 1010. Um, but beyond stipends, it's interesting. You know, one of the things I found is stipends only. I, I initially thought going in that stipends would be more effective than they are, but I actually think what faculty are more interested in, at least at our college, are are how thinking about how they can link their work around open to professional development opportunities and their own professional advancement. And so I've been putting more of my energy lately. I've been trying to move away from stipends, which I think are more short term, and really try to get academic administration to recognize open 
as something that counts toward a, a faculty member's professional advancement at the institution. So I think a faculty member wants to be assured that if I'm doing this work, you know, that his or her associate dean or his or her dean will look at that and say, yes, this counts towards your tenure. This, this is something that we want you to do. Um, and then professional development sort of opportunities like going to the Open Education Conference, right? Uh, I think that there's a real appetite among our faculty to think about how they can, um, you know, especially at a teaching and intensive institution, I, the way I kind of describe it is I think that there's a lot of, um, uh, there's a real appetite for doing scholarship and working around OER is a highly appropriate and I think realistic way for faculty who are trained as scholars after all, to kind of give back to that scholarship in a way that benefits students, to be kind of have some scholarly activity, to produce stuff. Um, and so that's been something I've continued to work on to really kind of dialogue with faculty about how can this, how can this count for you? How can you get professional capital out of this? And how can you, you know, use this to go to conferences and present and, and be a professional and do stuff that's professionally satisfying uh, for you that, and that, that in turn also benefits students. So that's been, um, I feel like it's been really good for the culture of the institution in terms of getting a lot of faculty to go to the conference every year. You know, I mean, next year, we, I hope to have another 12 to 15 faculty attend uh, open ed and some of them will present and uh, that's been great. Um, and then I wanna do more in terms of researching efficacy. I mean, it is it is nice that we're just, you know, uh, a half hour drive north of BYU and you have John Hilton and his group and he's reached out to me and I need to follow up with him, but he, you know, there's an army of gradu eager graduate students down at BYU. We're researching open ed and I would love to have them do more research on OER. Um, we do have our own analysts here at Salt Lake Community College. So I'm a co-author on this, but really I was just the pretty face on this paper. Um, Jesse Wininski Stevens was really did the analysis of this. So we published this in the International Review of Open and Distributed Learning last, uh, last summer. Um, and, it's, and it shows like a lot of other uh, OER research shows that, you know, there's no significant difference uh, between in terms of success of students. Um, we have one of our analysts partnering with Phil Grimaldi at OpenStax right now on an analysis of our history adoption. We use the OpenStax uh, US history book in all sections of History 1700. Um, and we flipped that over maybe a couple of years ago. And so they want to do some kind of um, look into how students are faring uh, in those sections that are open. Um, so, so we want to continue. We want to start publishing, you know, and contributing back to this kind of scholarship around OER. Uh, and uh, that's kind of a goal going forward. Um, in terms of making the initiative sustainable, you know, I did luck into a couple of grants early on. We, we had some money from the Cerritos Foundation um, for our work with My Open Math. And uh, that helped kind of you know, give me some starter money. And then we were a partner with OpenStax uh, alongside University of Georgia. They were also a partner on that Next Generation Courseware Challenge. And that kind of helped start things off in biology and sociology. Uh, we, we piloted OpenStax Tutor, which obviously required that we use the OpenStax content. Um, but one of the things I did manage to do early on is get cabinet to agree to assign a five dollar fee to sections that are open um, it initially came about because we are partnering we partnered with lumen with, with it was my open math and at the time um, it cost five dollars since then it's gone up to ten with the online homework uh, manager um, which is still a, a great price um, but I extended my argument to say, you know, for those sections where we don't have some kind of platform we're paying for, where the content is just free, can we just assign this fee and it will go into an index and that money can be used to kind of, we can be folded back into the initiative. It can 
It can stipend faculty, it can pay for their professional development, et cetera. And they agree to that. So I'm the, I'm the budget center manager over that index and I create um, sub funds for different departments and I push that money back down um, into the departments where that open work is happening. And it has been nice. I mean, for history, for example, they had to do some significant adaptation of the history book and that money has made that work possible. You know, we've stipended faculty um, both full-time and part-time over the summer to create, a, create some additional assessments um, for the resource, to adapt the resource, and, in, and again, to pay for faculty like Ted Moore, for example, in our history department to go to the Open Education Conference and present on the work. Um, and, you know, I've been pretty realistic about the fact that working with Open, you know, it does take some additional work. Um, when I've presented to faculty senate on this issue, I've said, you know, this this isn't um, this isn't something that that is easy necessarily. In some cases, it does take more work, and I do think it deserves, in some cases, some extra compensation. And the fee has made that uh, possible. Um, and so that's been that's been a nice kind of thing uh, for the initiative. And we, we've recently become one of the cool kids. We actually made. OER discoverable in our banner system. So you can see now when students look, they can do, and we totally copied Maricopa. I mean, Maricopa was way ahead on this, but we put the no cost, low cost there um, as well. So students can find, um, you know, sections that are no cost, low cost. And we're in the process now of, it's not as, I actually think Maricopa, I think they use PeopleSoft and we use Banner. It doesn't work quite as well as I would like in Banner, so it needs some design improvement and then we're in the process of kind of educating students about um, how to find this stuff. I'll finally say, and I didn't have a slide on this, you know, the three kind of areas where open has worked the best. I mean, our partnership with Lumen has been essential for the success of the math part. I mean, of those 700 sections, probably close to 300 are in math. Suzanne Mosdy in the Associate Dean of Math has been a total superstar when it comes to leading open efforts at the college. Um, Having OpenStax as a partner has been really great. I mean, when I show faculty some of the OpenStax textbooks, um, it really, um, it really, you know, I think sometimes when you say open, and for a faculty member who hasn't been involved in the OER movement, it conjures in their minds kind of amateurish stuff, and you show them an OpenStax book, and they're really wowed by, by how professional it is. Um, and then we have had, we've had a handful of faculty really interested in creating open content. And again, I think it gets at that. Um, there's a lot of, especially at a teaching as intensive institution, there are a lot of faculty here that want to do scholarly work. They want to produce stuff. And the open content initiative has been um, an opportunity for them to do that in a way that um, fits with their career. Um, so I will stop there. Um, again, I'm Jason Pickavance. There's my contact. And, uh, see if there are questions. All right, thank you very much, Jason. Yeah. That was, that was a, an amazing journey through uh, the work that you've done um, at Salt Lake Community College. Uh, <clears throat> we did have a comment from the audience from Peter Nevin, who I believe is with EduGlobal, um, a uh, subscription service in Canada uh, for content. He mentions that UBC, the University of British Columbia, is offering tenure development on open access and OER. So thanks for sharing that, Peter. You're welcome. All right. Well, you obviously wowed them, Jason. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you probably will have some follow-up questions over email. So thank yeah, you. So please feel free to email me questions. And I'll say in terms of the staffing, you know, it's, it's part of my job now. I mean, I'm over our, fa I do, you know, new faculty orientation, all these other things. So it's a, it's a little chunk of my job. Um, I have a part-time person that supports it. And, um, you know, like the last presenter said, I'm trying to institutionalize the initiative. So we're trying to bring in library and e-learning as well to kind of make it um, a part of what just the institution does. I'm really trying to transform it from an initiative to just this is something that we do now. It's a part of a part of the culture. And that's, you know, beyond student savings, 
as an obvious goal. And, and I, I really want it to be like others. I would like to move the discussion to a higher level and, you know, start getting, I'd like faculty to start thinking about how open um, leads to certain approaches to teaching and learning uh, that, that are better for students, you know. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jason. And thank you for those who are joining us online today. Uh, our next session will start in about four minutes. And um, speaking of librarians, we will be hearing from um, an amazing OER project uh, manager and um, librarian at Lansing. So stay tuned. <laughs>